There's certainly been a lot of crap talked about the demons on this channel and uh, demonic single entities, sort of the greater demons, if you will, especially. But today, Pigman's going to try and get some redemption for the Golden Griffin and the Corn's Bloody Fist. We've got Red Olgor and a Plague Ridden here who is tagging along on his Rotfly mount. The rest is going to be just some Plague Bears as he's up against the Ogres. A single unit of blue horrors there as well. Plague Bears will tread great against lower armor. Ogre troops and have plenty of HP to give to various uh, damage sources. Got some Iron Guts to oppose them. And some Bulls. Regiment of Renown uh, Maneater Pistols as well. Very strong choice. Hornfang Cavalry with great weapons. And a Tyrant. Caster is going to be a Fire Belly. Or... The Ogres, who's immediately going to get in here and start to mix it up with the Blues. Plague Bears in there as well. Noblar's rushing forward. Meanwhile, Red Olgor and his single entity death squad close the woods. Golden Griffin gets a little bit separated out as he gets uh, tangled up here with a bunch of big bodies in the woods. But Red Olgor coming through to assist his bro. Slanesh being left out of this is definitely a little bit sad for them, but that's totally fine. Yeah, the Bloody Fist here also will be moving in. We're going to see a little bit of Searing Doom from the Golden Griffin. One of its bound spells. Should do some solid damage, nothing too crazy. But uh, Rotfly also staying nearby. Leg Ridden, of course, will be able to get plenty of healing here. It's also got uh, Rancid Visitations for single entity damage on opponents. Powder Guts shooting out into the sky are going to be hitting the trees somewhat. And in general, the Plague Bearers are, uh, you know, doing a decent job of bogging various units down. The Blues managed to get some really cost-effective volleys on the Powder Guts there. The Ogres uh, only have their army ability to heal potentially here. And I think... It's pretty charged. hard to charge the army ability against demons, if I remember correctly. Um, but, nonetheless, a lot of it will come down to these three single entities. And they're not exactly at the best advantage fighting in the woods. I mean, they are fighting ogres, so kind of everyone's getting debuffed, to be honest. Except for the plague bears who are supporting them. So, ultimately, maybe it's in uh, Pigman's favor to actually take this fight in the woods here. So that the plague bears can perform as well as possible. Elsewhere in the world, the Plague Bears are just getting ridden down and destroyed, although, again, bogging down some units in certain areas, and at the very least being a giant blob of nuisance. There are certainly blobby bags of something. Boils, pile, all of the above. Who knows? Single entities are doing just fine, though. Corn's Bloody Fist, Red Olgor, Golden Griffin have taken basically no damage so far. The Plague Ridden's also been able to stay mostly safe. Powder Guts managed to disentangle themselves and are looking for some opportunities for some high-value shooting. But uh, the Ogres went a little bit light on shooting in general here, which I kind of understand to a degree uh, in this matchup. At the same time... I don't know, like, single entity damage-wise, I feel like lead belchers are really better against infantry units. They're not as good against single entities. Iron Blaster is sort of the same thing, so... Outside of trying to take more man-eater pistols, which can get expensive super fast, not really sure what you would do in this matchup, but I don't know. Maybe I would go with, like, three man-eater pistols, five trappers as a base, just to get maximum missile damage potential. And then, uh... Yeah, kind of go from there. Certainly the Crushers, or Mornfang Cavalry, rather, have been doing a decent job. Saber Tusk Pack also hanging around here. And uh, plenty of bulls alive also. Ogres are definitely not going quietly into that good night. And uh, let's manage to pretty much kill the rest of the army here. Yep, Plague Bear is popping all across the field. And uh, barrier being damaged here by those powder guts. The tree is definitely also working to the demon's advantage as it will block some of the shots of the powder guts there as they hit those big thick trees. Those are big thick bullets too, so the trees blocking them individually 
each bullet that gets walked is a good amount of value, right? But uh, Traps goes off there. It's going to do a tiny bit of damage and uh, hit these units. That said, Red Olgor does have Gore Feast, so he doesn't even necessarily need direct healing from the Nurgle, Nurgle Bro. Uh, Horn's Bloody Fist, of course, does not have Gore Feast and will need some passive healing. Does have 10% ward save, though, from Gore Shell, which is quite nice. And uh, Golden Griffin, his Regiment of Renown ability is basically just that he gets uh, different bounce spells, which is good, I guess. And also really good stats, like 56, 56, oh, 90 armor, I forgot about that as well. So actually, as a single entity to fight in this here, due to his very high attack, defense, and armor, even though his weapon strength isn't the best, he actually can hang with these two corn bros just fine in melee. And I forget that the Golden, Golden Griffin exists. A lot of the demonic regiments for now, and I honestly forget they exist because I don't play Monogod super often. And when you do see Monogods played, typically the players go wide and are not necessarily always taking the regiments of renown taking more basic troops and just powerful like lords and characters and stuff but nice to see especially when demons themselves are being brought you do get to uh, see the regiments from now a lot more often in action here like the armor means that uh, golden griffin's surprisingly impervious to the attacks of the noblar trappers here like they would almost be better off shooting horn's bloody fist here and again with the ward save physical resistance are also going to be heavily mitigated in the damage they can do, so really actually smart build construction here, even though it seems like a big dumb blob build. Some specific interactions of stats means that this is uh, going to be tough for the ogres to take down right now. Didn't really take any anti-large, well, besides the Mornfake cavalry. Actual crushers or like man-eater weapons would have been obviously better here, but you can always predict what your opponent will do, although I don't know, I would say not a lot of missiles, but, like, blue spam is probably a viable build selection in this matchup as well, potentially, if you have the right deals to then deal with the, the right tools, then to deal with the heavies. Could be risky if your blues get charged down, but, uh, likewise, could be risky for the ogres to try and go wide and you just get blasted by blues. I don't know, it's an interesting matchup for sure, but, uh... Well, upgraded fleshy abundance, courtesy of the Plague Ridden, as... Balance of Power doesn't really like the Ogre's chances here, despite the fact that it's just these four single entities, three of them the big blob on the ground, just grinding it out. Smacking over Ogre bellies. Golden Griffin, at least, seems to be having a grand old time. Red Olgor also. And the Bloody Fist. Starting to get some significant tear routes, and the Ogres are... I would consider a low leadership faction like they're better than like Skaven or Greenskins, maybe Beastmen, but I would consider them within that same sort of grouping of low leadership factions. So in an end game like this, the Terror will definitely be a huge problem for them, especially as the Tyrant starts to take more and more damage, and if he even possibly gets uh, routed off here, we'll see. But 116 kills, almost 2,000 damage value on the Bloody Fist. 1700 on Red Olgor and 1200 on the Golden Griffin. So didn't all necessarily pay for themselves, but even still, tactically was quite good. Little Flaming Sword of Ruin upgraded is going to help significantly, not only from the Kindle Flame, but also to cut through the physical resistance of all these demonic units. Definitely a smart play there. That is actually going to equalize things a little bit here. Will the Ogre's leadership be able to hold out? Golden Griffin's not looking too hot. Red Ogre is also getting pretty close to his healing cap. Horn's Bloody Fist still has plenty of cap space left, but we'll see. We shall see. Golden Griffin looking uh, a little, little flimsy at the moment. Might be not long for this world. Let's get the banners out of the way so we can just watch these beautiful cinematic bouts of action. Like Ridden's gonna charge down at this point. A little rare charge. Penalty. Get some damage in as well. It's not a complete pushover when it comes to being a round combatant here. Yeah, 56 melee defense in particular. Once Cloud of Flies is active, means he's pretty tanky. He can kind of hang around and not take too much damage, although he is definitely taking some damage. But uh, yeah, Tyrant again takes a few big hits. 
Olden Griffin manages to shrug off the hits of the ogres with his own 56 melee defense. And once the Lord starts terror routing, Luke takes another big hit there. Looks like Red Ogre is fully charged up with his Hellblade now. Which, uh, more than 80 kills. Took a while to get that going, but it is finally going. Up to 618 weapon strength with anti-large, 25. Can slay these ogres, no problem. Oof. Tyrant goes down. And uh, Golden Griffin starts to disintegrate and does, in fact, pop. Like dust in the wind. He's gone. Now it's up to the last few. Just as planned, on honestly, to uh, abandon Horde and Nerglings in their last hour of need. But, of course, they can carry the day by themselves without these Zinchian tricks. And uh, credit to Pigman there, a very fun build, like I said, and it's an interesting one for sure. A lot of risk to it, but it ended up paying off quite well. And uh, yeah, I have to say, Corn's Bloody Fist and Red Ogre are both quite impressive. Uh, Golden Griffin also did a decent job. I mean, 11,000 total damage to help. Maybe if it had... Uh, yeah, it, possible it could have got a little bit more, but it's still pretty decent. I mean, it didn't quite technically pay for itself, but tactically it was nice to have that extra single entity in that blob. Uh, the Plague Bears acted very well as meat bags to absorb plenty of damage, but I almost wonder if you get cut a couple of them and just tech into more blues. Blues are just so cost-effective in terms of their damage output against ogres. Any of these light armor ogre units just get absolutely shredded by them, so probably would option a few more of them if I was playing this, but it's hard to criticize too much considering it worked pretty well despite everything. I mean, we're gonna, we are going to see some inflated values overall on the ogre's side due to healing high value targets on that demon's build but even still i mean powder guts are a strong choice for sure many of uh, the uh mourn fangs rather gray weapons did a decent job of being anti-large cavalry didn't quite do enough uh to justify themselves tactically needed maybe a little bit more out of them and the bulls also again decent job decently cost effective i like the pick of the iron guts here as well the armor actually makes them uh, pretty tanky although Demons do have a good amount of armor-piercing damage. They tend to take more uh, non-AP units in this matchup, in my experience. But, I don't know. It's definitely a fun battle, for sure. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.